frontier town of Port William on the western seacoast of Canada. Jumping off place for the great lumber forests, the far northern gold country, and tonight, that realm where the impossible and the incredible are commonplace. The Port Williams Hotel. Rooms $1.25 and up. Up to $2. But at this stage of their lives, $2 is important money to Jan and Philip Weris. Because they've come to the end, the dismal end of a long cherished dream. But for Philip Weris, tonight is also the beginning of an adventure beyond his wildest dreams. Beyond belief. Yet, it happened. Check out top 12 known bathrooms down the hall. Thank you. Well, we've sure come a long way, haven't we? I guess we can stand it here for one night. Yeah. Oh, Bill, we... It's not the end of the world. Anyway, what have we lost? Eight or nine months? Now, that's not all we lost. We lost the farm, every dime we saved. You didn't even have enough money to buy a pair of shoes or dresses. That lousy flat we lived in for three years. Hamburgers and spaghetti every night, month after month. You don't like my spaghetti? And I've given you nothing but a bad time ever since we've been married. Please stop. Ooh, oh, you were a bust as a farmer. You're a darn good newspaper man. The Gazette will be very glad to have you back. You'll see. Oh, sure, sure. All I have to do is tell them I'm coming, and they'll arrange a ticker tape parade around Dominion Square. Why don't you go down and get the train tickets? The walk will do you good. Because I don't have the money. What? I said I don't have the money. What about the money from the farm? Well, we didn't get 3,500 the way I said. We only got 28. 22 we owed on the mortgage, and the creditors got the rest. You mean we're broke? Not even enough for a train fare? Not even enough for this room for very long. Why you were so depressed. What are we gonna do, Phil? Well, I'll try to get a job. I don't know what, but we won't starve. Well, look, we will be able to save enough to get back to Montreal eventually. Eventually? How long is eventually? Look, I know I made a mess of things. Oh, baby, now please don't cry. We'll make out. Apparently, the last tenant in this room had money troubles, too. He went right to the heart of the problem. The gold miner's handbook. First thing tomorrow, I'll try to find us a place where we can fix our meals. What? That book you're staring at is over a thousand dollar bill. I don't know. When I saw this name written here, I... Larry Barton. So? I don't know. Oh, screwy. Look, uh, we better get finished. Uh, go to bed. It's getting late. Phil, 
I'm real sorry I made that fuss. I wanted to... Port Williams, September 7th, 1960. Out of the gold country of the far north today came a shocking story of the corruption of the human spirit caused by the po poisonous erosion of greed. Just three months ago, Lawrence Barton, 42, and his 38-year-old brother, Robert, took the train from Quebec to this west coast port town. After purchasing gold mining equipment and supplies here, they embarked for Skagway and there set out on horseback for the vast country of the Canadian Yukon. The club-footed Lawrence and his younger bro... Club foot. That's laying on a little thick, isn't it? Maybe, but it's got a great start. Oh, such modesty. Since when did you become a writer? I didn't write this. You didn't? Are you serious? Now, wait a minute. I do recall waking up. Yes, I woke up suddenly, thinking about that gold miner's handbook for some strange reason. And I got out of bed, and I picked it out of the wastebasket. But that's all I remember. I don't recall writing anything or, or even going back to bed. Boy, get into the shower and wake up. In the shower, I, I, uh, I figured out what must have set me off. Hmm? Larry Barton, the name in, uh, in this handbook. The brothers in that yarn are Lawrence and Robert Barton. It's an absolutely fascinating story, Phil. What? You still don't remember writing this? Nope. Don't you think this is a little strange? Oh, more than a little. But uh, what can I do about it? Boy, I know. You can finish it and send it to J.G. Carter. He'll buy this in a minute. He's a newspaper editor, not a publisher of fairy tales. This is perfect Sunday supplement stuff. Look, but it isn't true. I, mean, I get myself in a fine fix, sending in a hoax. Well, who would care? You send the paper an exciting story, and we get the train fare back to Montreal. Honey. I'm serious, Bill. This is a darn good story. These two brothers traveling through the mountain country up north looking for gold all the trouble they get into, and how they're lost, and they haven't any food. I don't care what you say. Th this is just the kind of thing they want. Like this part here. Look, where you say, actually, the mine is only 16 miles from the settlement of Riverton, only they don't know it. And with all this gold, they're starving to death. Oh, brother. There they are, just sitting there, thinking of nothing but that gold and hating each other, each waiting for the other to make a move toward his gun. What a situation. How does it end? 
Well, they kill each other naturally. Oh, Phil, I'm serious. If you put an ending to this... It ends. Where it belongs. In the wastebasket. Now, any five-year-old could figure that out. But that's what's wrong with it, besides being a fake. I'm off. just came in from the east. Thanks. What about this? Huh? Take a look. Brothers kill each other over gold discovery by Philip Werris. How about that check? Jan, I simply don't think... Phil, listen, I cut out every reference to, to that club foot. Read Carter's letter. Since it's a first-rate job of reporting, he doesn't even object to the ending. Keep reading. A follow-up story? Yes. They've already sent a man to Quebec to, to dig up background material on the Barton family. What do they think about the brothers who killed each other? And what about the mine? Who gets it? Don't you see the wonderful possibilities of exploiting this story? And they'll want pictures, too. Of the mine, of the bodies, of me. Oh, you're making a celebrity out of me, do you know that? A fraud. Yeah. Well, the least will happen. I'll never work for another newspaper as long as I live. Sorry, I just didn't think of all those things. I'll say you didn't think. I just wanted us to have enough money so I could get to a decent hospital. Hospital? Jan, why didn't you tell me? Hospital? Whatever possessed you to go... Yes? Warris? Philip Warris? Yes? I'm Mrs. Lawrence Barton. Lawrence. Martin. Yes. I don't want to intrude. I just want to thank you. Thank me? Yes. I suppose I knew Larry was dead. I hadn't heard from him in over three months. But I'd never have known what really happened if I hadn't read your story. Mrs. Barton, please come in and sit down. Thank you. Mrs. Barton. Your husband stayed in this room. Well, at least I think he did. And that's really all I know about him. Well, I don't understand. Are you the Philip Werris who wrote this story? Yes. I wrote it. But... I made it up, Mrs. Barton. Why, why are you lying to me? I'm not. When we took this room, we found a book belonging to your husband, with his name in it. And I unconsciously just used his name. But the rest was sheer fiction, believe me. Oh, Mrs. Barton, I know I... I did a terrible thing. An unforgivable thing. But it just never occurred to me that Larry Barton would have a wife somewhere just didn't stop to think. Mrs. Barton, this is not his fault. It's mine. I sent that story in. You see, we needed money. Oh, so stop it. Stop it. Are you both insane or do you think I'm a complete fool? I can't imagine why you're trying to do this to me. But I'm going to claim my husband's body and Robert's too. And you'd better not try to do anything further to prevent me. Mrs. Barton, please. Wait a minute. Wait. Now, Mrs. Barton. Does your husband really have a brother named Robert? And did they go up north together? But what about the other things of the story? Well, I mean, they can't all be true. Their ages, their, their, their deep affection for each other. Mr. Harris, what do you want of me? 
I don't know how to explain this to you. It's all an impossible, horrible coincidence. My husband did make up that story. So you see, your husband's probably alive. I'm sure he is. Well, if he is, I'm going to find him. Spartan, I'll help you. Believe me, if he's alive, I'll find him. I do. Oh, hello. Say, I wonder if you could help me. I'm looking for two men, brothers. Their name's Barton. Never heard of them. What do they do? Well, they're supposed to be up in this country prospecting for gold. It's a mighty big country. Yes. Well, can you tell me this? Is there any gold mining at all in this area? I mean, nearby, within 50 or 100 miles. Never heard of any gold being found in this area. Well, is there someone who knows for certain? I'm also the government claims officer. Any gold found, the claim's got to be recorded with me or it don't belong to the finder. I see. You know this country pretty well? Been parking my feet on that there pot-bellied stove for the past eight years. I wonder if you'd be familiar with this at all. Just 16 miles east of Riverton, they came upon their first sign of human habitation in more than 11 weeks. A miner's cabin on the south shore of a small heart-shaped lake. But there was no one in the cabin. They forded the shallow water and came upon a small one-man mine. Inside, they found the miner. He had been dead for weeks, victim of a rock slide when one of his showing timbers broke loose. Hey, there is a little heart-shaped lake out that way. There is? Yeah, just about 16 miles east of here, too. I haven't been up there in a couple of years, but I don't think you'd find a cabin or a mine or not to mention a miner. I don't want to be mining anyway. Say, uh, could you sell me a, a pair of field glasses? Why, sure. Sure thing. Martin? Robert. Where's your brother? In the mine. Where's that? The other end of the lake. Yes. 
I know where it is. as soon as I can. is very worried about you. Mr. Barton, I'm not going to hurt you. I, I... Mr. Barton, your wife is in Port Williams and she, she wants... Lawrence Barton was dead. He was dead from cold and hunger. But as Philip Wares had written days before it actually happened, he was really the victim of the corruption of the human spirit caused by the erosion of fear, mistrust, and greed. The story that he had typed that night in some sort of psychic seizure turned out to be true. Only the ending proved to be inaccurate. He couldn't get that part from the mind of Lawrence Barton because it hadn't yet happened. What do you call this sort of fantastic occurrence? Well, it's sometimes almost impossible to label things accurately, particularly when we know so little about what we're trying to label. However, the scientists who study psychic phenomena have devised 14 separate categories, or 14 labels. They are precognition, possession, clairvoyance, and so on. And as research continues, more are being added. Is the story you've just seen, then, telepathy, or psychometry, or perhaps both? Or perhaps both and more? No one can say yet for certain. All that we can say for certain is that the story you've just seen is not fiction. It happened. 